This meeting is being recorded. Uh, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And last week, we spoke about the death of the church by saying that the church, uh, that is that should die. Uh, and that is actually that we as the church must die. And we spoke that in the New Testament until now there is only one generation. And that is the generation of the offspring of Jesus Christ. I want us to take a moment and study the, uh, the symptoms of death. As we say that the church must die, what is the symptoms of death? Uh, we have to continuously ask ourselves if we had died successfully. That is actually what we are doing in the season. We need to accept the death sentence and do it quickly. Death is that which will accelerate your grace uh, and your, your growth. Uh, you also need to apply this symptoms of death in all and every level of your life. So let us look at um, what is the symptoms of the, the church that is, is dying. And uh, the first thing that we are going to look at is actually the dilated pupils. And that talks about your eyes. Now, when you look at that, uh, the, uh, the, the vision is enlarged. Uh, and yet it is not blinking and the eyes fix only on one spot and it is slightly open. Uh, let us look at what is the enlarged vision. This speaks of an enlarged vision and that is prophetic insight and the revelation of something bigger than yourself. John had the revelation of Christ in Revelation 1. Uh, uh, from one to three, uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified, signified it by the angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. And blessed is he who reads and those who hear these words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So we see that the whole book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So every scripture in Revelation must actually point to Christ. And uh, then it says, and it sent and signified by his angel. Signified means it's a symbolic book. We cannot read it only in logos. We must read it in symbolic. And uh, we know that there are many people today that are not able to do that. And we see in John 3.30, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who come down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. So, um, so uh, we see, uh, when I was reading it, uh, I realized, you know, that is in John, it is in John, and that is in the New Testament. And it says no one has ascended to heaven. And I was thinking, okay, if it, say, it says that, uh, that there's nobody that has ascended to heaven, what happened to Elijah and Enoch? Because uh, many people say um, that they went to heaven. <laughs> went to heaven uh, because there's no one in heaven but at the end of this uh, uh, if I do not do it today I will do it uh, next time uh, that we can read about that and see what the word is saying about that and in Isaiah 9 verse 7 of the increase 
of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of david and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform it so here we see that the government of christ will never end it will go on uh, forever so and uh, god actually operate and it says he establish it judgment and justice and that is one of the thing that we see that lack today in our societies there's no uh, uh, you know everyone close the eyes for that what is wrong and there's no justice there's no justice for those that do not have a voice and we see in ephesians 1 verse 18 and now i have come to make you understand what what it is to be for oh sorry i i skipped one <laughs> sorry ephesians 1 verse 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling who are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and here we see that it talks about the eyes of your understanding now our spirit does not have one or two eyes it has many eyes and we must ask god uh, to open the eyes of our understanding that we can see more clearly and it is a prophetic insight even if it does not concern yourself but the generations ahead and moses saw the promised land but he did not enter isaiah saw jesus christ crucified in isaiah 53 but he also didn't uh, uh, didn't saw that he was long on dead and so he didn't but he, but both of them we see there and many other of the prophets saw things that was in the future uh in the future generations uh there is a movement away from ourselves to kingdom vision and purpose uh and there's many um that their the vision and their purpose it's only for this this life and uh, we live actually in practice for where we are we will end uh, or where we will begin <laughs> because the end when we die here physically that is actually our beginning and our be uh, end must be better than our beginning we read in daniel 10 verse 40 now i have come to make you understand what is to be for your people in the latter days for the vision is for many days yet to come and um, we know that daniel the, the 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 prophet in the old testament didn't know anything about jesus second coming they didn't know that but for the jew for the israelite was the destroying of the temple was for them persecution it was tribulation uh, when there's no uh, temple anymore so and that was what they, uh, daniel was actually prophesied to them um, and that is an a, a enlarging vision carrying the burden for a nation or a people who cannot see it you know we in the apostolic is really very uh, 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 fortunate that we uh, is in the you know God brought us into the apostolic where there is a large vision where we get some uh, uh, revelation from the throne room of God so we are really a blessed people uh, that we receive the grace that we can understand what god is actually doing to die on the earth and in isaiah 54 verse 2 it said enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling 
Do not spare. Lengthen your cord and strengthen your stakes. You know, and uh, when I repeat this, um, we can we can see how Jabez actually did that in one Chronicles four verse eighteen. It's like and Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, "Oh, that you would uh, bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I might not cause pain." So God granted him what he requested. Now, guess what? When you pray, Isaiah 54, verse 2, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare, lengthen your cause and strengthen your stake. If you pray that to God, God will grant it to you when you request it with your whole heart. And we know that Jabez mean pain. He caused his mother a lot of pain in his birthing process. And now he said, uh, help me, keep me for, from evil and that I may not cause pain because his name is pain. He actually carried pain in his name. And then we look at what it means when it said, yet not blinking. Not overlooking or winking at any ignorance or wickedness. This speaks of not turning away and refusing to engage in accuracies or sins in people's lives as well as your own life. Uh, to not turn a blind eye to anything that opposes the kingdom of God. Not compromise. That is not compromise. We cannot compromise the word of God. When we see uh, that people are in ignorance and wickedness, that we must talk about that. Uh, and uh, we are blessed that uh, in this season we talk about that, but we must be very careful what we say and how we say it. Because if we point fingers to uh, certain people, you can end up in jail. So we must be very careful and that we are not pointing fingers but we can only say what the bible say, says about certain things and we read in acts 17 verse 30 truly these times of ignorance god overlooked there was a time that god overlooked certain things he said but now commands all men everywhere to repent so when we talk to people it must bring them to repentance um, and we know that a uh, unbeliever cannot repent an uh, unbeliever cannot repent so uh, and it's so long you know it's not come to one you hear and see things and you jump at that person and you tell him what the words say like. it is you must first start with a, a friendship till that person can trust you and then you can say you know uh, in your friendship where you trust one another and said, you know, that uh, I want to talk to you about something um, that uh, it's important for you because when people are not do, you know, they are not talking the true word of God, the Bible tells us that Satan bind our minds to do his will. So we must be very careful how we are doing it today and as I say, the word tells us we must be kind to every, to, to, to all people so that God must give us the grace that even if people do the wrong thing and we talk about that, that we are, we are doing it in kindness, in love, you know, and the word tells us if it's not love, then um, it will not help us. And then we see that there are eyes fixed on a certain spot. And we read in 2 Peter 3 verse 14. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And we know actually that is where the church must come. And the church is me and you. And it's it is we must become 
in a place of peace without spot and blameless. And we know when we are in Christ, we are blameless because a Christ set us free. You know, the truth set us free. And in Hebrews 12, verse 2, we see, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So here we see that that, that is uh, where our eyes must be fixed. It must be on this one spot. And that is Christ. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. So he did everything that he could do. There's nothing else uh, that God can do more. Everything is already given unto us to live a life uh, as, uh, in peace without spot and blameless. And because he is our author and finisher of our faith. Um, I was shocked when somebody was saying to us that many pastors actually lose their faith. So that is a thing that uh, we have all have that responsibility to see that we are in the faith. And for me, another word for faith is to trust in the Lord. To trust in doesn't matter how a thing looks like, but that we trust him. And then we see the eyes that is slightly open in Psalm 119, verse 37. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. You know that we must look not on worthy things, that we focus, uh, our focus, and we know that the mnemonic of focus uh, that our focus must not be on ourselves. It must be, uh, uh, you can go and you can look at focus forward, focus um, upward, focus and Christocentric focus. So we must focus on Christ only. Um, and then uh, the Bible uh, in Luke uh, 24 verse 34 uh, for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And you know, there are people, uh, their heartbeat expired. Their heartbeat that must beat for Christ. This is all about having a heart that is totally and completely focused on God. His plan and his purposes. There is no longer a seeking after the fulfillment of of your needs and desires, but only a heart after seeking the will and the need of the Father. This is a heart that no longer beats for its own desires, but that which pleases the Father. And I want to say to you, that is not something we can do in our own lives. We don't have the capacity, but it's the Holy Spirit that is doing it in our hearts. So, um, uh, and uh, when we make the decision and we say, but God must be first in my life, I must focus on God. And uh, as I say with Jabez, he was asking God things and the Bible said, God um, said, uh, you know, he said, yes, that is what's going. Let me get that that word first, um, where he then said, you know, and he granted it for Jabez. He granted him his request. So don't you think that when we ask God for that, that he will not do it? Because we are his sons. When we ask him for that, he will give it to us. Um, and uh, in Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9, say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
can you agree with me that it is better to focus on God's thoughts because it's so much higher than that we can uh, we have our thoughts um, especially when um, when we desire something and you know it become actually uh, you you become possessed by that you know and not listening to the the you know what God is actually thinking about that so for me these ways are wired, uh, uh, higher than mine and his thoughts are better than mine. So I think it's a very good uh, uh, advice that we can take from Isaiah 55 um, that God's thoughts are better and his ways also are better. We read in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says there, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So I want to tell you, I heard many people that talk down on themselves. Now here we can apply Isaiah 55 again. Ask God what he thinks about us. Because his thoughts are, are higher than our thoughts. And he sees us totally different than we see ourselves sometimes. So, um, and God is a good God. And he said the thoughts that he had uh, for us is of peace and not evil. And to give you a future and a hope. And we know the hope uh, in the Lord. It's never, maybe it can happen. No, it's not that hope. It's a, a, a false assurance that what we ask from God, that he will give it to us. Now, um, uh, as we talk about that, the, the death of the church and the church is me and you, to what must we die? We must die to our own desires. We must die to our own and we must die to our thoughts and believe uh, in his plans for our lives. We must die to our local church. We must die to our own kingdom. And we must build his kingdom. That is why we are here on planet earth to build the kingdom of God. In John 14 verse 27 Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It is only when our heart stops beating for the world that it brings forth life. And we know that when we look around us, uh, you know, many people are really in the Depression, they are tumbled down, and uh, but this scripture in John 14, verse 27 says, Don't let your heart be troubled by what you see, and don't let it uh, make you afraid, because our focus must be on Christ. And in Proverbs 4, verse 23, uh, I was uh, when I start my intimate relationship with the Lord, uh, that was a thing that, uh, you know, that, that really stuck into my mind. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So we must be very careful what we uh, allow in our hearts, and we know our heart is our mind. And it said, keep it with diligence. We must make sure that what we uh, place our hearts on, that we place our thoughts on, it is on Christ. We must be diligent in that because everything that happens in our lives comes out of our thoughts. And in John 7 verse 38, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, 
out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. You know, and a lot of times, that is word. It is word, it's Christ. And if the word says it, it will happen. And uh, when you, you, you are saturated with the word of God, that is what will come out when anybody uh, shake you. There will come out word. Um, and that we must come and we know that water is the word of God. So um, that is what must happen. Uh, you know that uh, that only thing that we must allow to come out of our mouth must be word. In Philippians 3 verse 8 it says, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I might gain Christ. Now this uh, portion that I'm busy doing uh, it is actually uh, absolved the bowels and the bladder. So that is a part of our inner beings. It's a part of some of the things in our life. And the, the, that is uh, actually for me, it is actually cleaning, uh, you know, uh, where God busy uh, with his cleaning process in uh, sanctification and mortification. And this Philippians 3 verse 8, this is a picture of your discharging your past. You release the things that are behind uh, you and do not go back there. Do not be like Lot's wife. Do not continue to look back at what you have left behind and where you come from. God's demand is for us to focus on our commission and our purpose. And uh, in Philippians 3 verse 13 and 14, uh, uh, Paul wrote, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for what Christ Jesus has hold laid uh, hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have uh, pre uh, apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. We must not look back. And, um, and we see here that Paul, uh, and, and you know, we cannot say, but he's Paul. No, that is for the church. We must know which scripture are for the church and which scriptures are for a, uh, for a, uh, a single man but here he said i do one thing and a lot of times we say especially uh, us that are women we can multitask but in the spirit we must only do one thing forgetting the things that is in the past and go forward to which head and head and in luke 9 Verse 37 to 62 say, Now it happened as I journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Uh, then he said to another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bur bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And I hope you hear that is what God also said to you and to me this morning. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid then farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, back is fit for the kingdom of God. That is for me a very shocking statement that Jesus was doing. So that is why it is so important um, that we must not fix 
our eyes on the past. Sometimes, yes, we must look at the past to see if we grown, how much we grown in our in the last two weeks. But we do not look in the things that we that we doing. We only look to uh, to uh, examine ourselves to see if there's any growth. But Jesus said, you go and preach the kingdom of God. And the demand that Jesus placed here was an immediate migration. You must leave sentimental relationships behind you. And what we learned, is you can only have a sentimental relationship with your spouse. We have to search our own hearts and see what relationships and demands are keeping us from going to publish and proclaim the message of the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you to again study and meditate on the migration principles that we discussed on the study on John 5 with a man at the pool of Bethesda. So and uh, I want to say to you, we will never stop migrating because there's so many areas in our life that we need to migrate. We must migrate very often and that we must purge out the old leaven. In 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7, therefore purge out the old leaven that you might be a new lump since you truly are unleavened, for indeed Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. Now the leaven uh, is actually the, the sinful things in our lives. We must purge ourselves and we must, uh, we must uh, 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 work on this in our life. We must, uh, uh, as the Bible said, you know, we must uh, 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 what is that scripture now uh, that we must uh, um, oh now I cannot remember that but it is you know you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling that is what the scripture actually is saying you must work out your own salvation you are already saved by Jesus but there's other things that we must be safe from and then we see um, in Mark 8, verse 15, then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Old leaven is a picture of religion and a religious mindset. All of us come out of that. So that is where we must work out our own uh, salvation with fear and trembling. And uh, we see in the Old Testament that the Ark of the Covenant has shifted. And now we know that the Ark of the Covenant is the, the presence of God. Are you still in the religion or have you shifted already? In 1 Chronicles 16, verse 37 to 40, said, So he left Asaph, and his brothers there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister before the Ark regularly as every day's work required. And Obed Edom with his 68 brethren, including Obed Edom, the son of Jadotan. You see, there's two uh, Obed Edoms in the Bible. And Rusa to be gatekeepers and that of the priest and his brethren and the priest before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place that was at Gibeon. It said before the tabernacle of the Lord to offer burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering regularly morning and evening and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord which he commanded Israel. And then we read in 1 Chronicles 21, verse 29, For the tabernacle of the Lord and the altar of the burnt offering, which Moses had made in the wilderness, were at the time at the high place in Gibeon. So here we see that the tabernacle, the altar for the burnt offering, was 
on Mount Gibeon, not of the ark. He said people were still bringing sacrifices to the tabernacle at Gibeon and the priests were functioning there. The ark was in Jerusalem. In Gibeon, people were serving religious, although the presence of God has already departed from them. His presence has moved to Jerusalem. What about you and me? Are you still at Gibeon or have you moved, moved with the ark to Jerusalem? And we know we are the new Jerusalem. And in Philippians 3 verse 30, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I hear a lot of people say, Oh, I wish I can be where I was 20 years ago. <laughs> no. uh, if you find out that you are not uh, progressing, then you must make that uh, that migration. And the church must know how to move on into the purposes of God. Because we know God all the time change. He, he, uh, he bring a generation. That generation must bring the purposes of God in, uh, you know, to pass. And then in the next generation have something else and the next generation have something else but now in the apostolic we must fulfill the purposes that god has for this generation and then uh, there is uh, 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 to give up the ghost it is finished the determination of breath in john in the city. So when Jesus had received the so wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So when Jesus died, he already did uh, for us what he could do. He, he uh, fulfilled everything that he had to do. And in Galatians 2.20, he said, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Because he gave us himself for us to be crucified. Now we do what we need to do because we love him in what he did. And uh, sons of God are led by the spirit and not by the flesh. And uh, we read in Romans 8 verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are uh, the sons of God. So you can go and take time to study and meditate on Romans 8. And this will teach you how to walk in the spirit because it said, uh, if you walk in the spirit, you do this. When you do not walk in the spirit, you do that. So that you can uh, um, actually build that into your life. In John 20, verse 22 to 23, uh, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them if you retain the sins of any they are retained so that is the the authority that god actually gave unto his sons that there are sometimes people that we can not forgive their sins if they live constantly in in error and in uh, then um there will be people that uh, we can retain. And uh, we will be looking in um, what hinder re the response. And we can look at the relaxed jaw and the mouth is slightly open. This is the position where we do not respond to our enemies. 
I think that is a long journey that we had to, to, to go through, that we do not respond to our enemies, we do not retaliate in any way. You consciously choose not to speak. You only open your mouth for God to speak through you. This is the place from where you release the oracles of God, His teachings and His instructions to those with whom you engage. So that is a very difficult thing for me uh, to keep my mouth close uh, to enemies that come and say all kinds of things. But that is a thing that, again, uh, that it says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling to keep our mouths shut and not respond to our enemy. In Titus 2 verse 8 said, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. And so we must be a good, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, when they look at us, we, that the, the way that we operate, that it will not make people to turn away from God. And open your mouth, speak as the oracles of God. God speak, only speak what the Father says. Uh, 1 Peter 4, 11, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If, if anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, we must, when we speak, we must speak the oracles of God. And in John 12, verse 50, and I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. So here we see that Jesus, uh, you know, I heard people say, yes, but God gave me a, a healthy mind. Jesus didn't use his healthy mind. He only speaks what the Father said to him to speak. He never speaks his own mind. He was totally submitted to the Father. In John 16 verse 13, now even when he, the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So here we see that uh, and that Jesus was talking to them. And uh, that is why in uh, you know that we can say uh, uh, that when we speak the oracles of God, then it's not us that speak. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through us. Because we, um, you know, we there's so many limitations still in us. But when we speak, it must be the oracles, the Spirit of God that's speaking through us, the oracles. And Exodus 4, 4 verse 10 to 12, we see there um, when we study that, uh, like Moses. And Moses said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing of the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now let me go and I will be with you I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. We must trust this word that God will do that because he's not the man that lie. If he say, I will be you with you and I will tell you what you must say. In Acts 8 verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. And Philip was operating through the Holy Spirit. 
In Acts 10 verse 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said, I truly, I perceive that God shows no partiality. So here we see that <clears throat> Peter was talking through the Holy Spirit because he said God shows no partiality to anyone. In Ephesians 6, 19, uh, Paul said, and for me, that is for me, an awesome scripture, this one. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I might open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. So that is what the Holy Spirit do through us. He make us boldly, and then we can uh, uh, make known the mysteries of the gospel. So that is the desire. When I read this the first time, I said, Lord, that is what I want to do. <laughs> so uh, God is faithful. And then we see in Luke 1, verse 64, um, with Zechariah, immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed and he spoke, praising God. You remember when uh, the angel came to Zechariah and said that his wife will have a baby. They were also old and he, and he was actually asking a question and the angel said, you will be mute. Told you will. And then here, um, Zechariah's mouth was open. And then in Ezekiel 3 verse 27, But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, <coughs> Excuse me, He who hears, let him hear. <coughs> Excuse me. And he who refuses, let him refuse. For they are a rebellious house. So uh, we must have uh, 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 hearing ears to hear. <coughs> Excuse me. What the Lord is actually saying, the Holy Spirit saying through us. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Proverbs 31 verse 8, open your mouth for the speechless in the course of all who are appointed to die. So we must open our mouth for those who cannot speak. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Proverbs 31, 26, so open the mouth with wisdom and on it tongue is the law of kindness. Then Psalms 81 verse 10. <coughs> Excuse me. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth. <laughs> Excuse me. Yo, oh, sorry. Let us go on. Um, Numbers 22 verse 28. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? What have I done to you? So here we see that God could even open the mouth of the donkey. So I think I'm going to stop here for today. Next time we will go on with this teaching of the uh, the death of the church so that we can um, and we can see what God actually then said because uh, there is we know that there is uh, consequences for um, you know for disobedience 
and that we will do the next week. So um, I'm going uh, uh, to give you actually a time to say what God revealed to, to you during the what we did this morning. So uh, if there's anyone that wants to make a comment or say something, you can raise your hand and then uh, we can discuss that. Let me have a dialogue at this moment. So uh, that is a very important part of our lives as, as uh, believers. Uh, because we have to die. Paul wrote it and he said that we must die to ourselves daily. So that is what we need to do. So uh, is there anyone that wants to say something? Otherwise, I will, uh, I will call you by name. <laughs> so uh, when you have the time, uh, do it. Uh, otherwise, I'm calling your name. All right. <laughs> who's, who's going to say first something? Okay, I will do what Herman always doing. He said he always start at the left hand on, uh, you know. Oh, there's Priscilla. You're welcome. Yo, um, Krista, overall I can say that uh, this is a really a good teaching and there's so many things to think about. But things that sit out for me um, is that how to die in yourself um, is, uh, yo, you need to have your focus uh, on God always and then you must walk in the Spirit. It's, it's very important. And as she said, the Spirit got many eyes, so we must uh, but he will lead you, you know, um, to uh, your to understand the word and also to say the right things on the right um, time. And then the other thing that sits out is migration. It's very important to don't stay on one place, you know, to go over to different places uh, as the Lord leads you. Something uh, that also stood out for me is that, that thing, and I also read that in this week, the, the first week, um, that you you must leave, um, uh, you know, sometimes all your things and just follow the Lord, you know. So, and that is difficult because um, I think for people that is in works and those things, you know, um, I think it was one when he, when Jesus was with him on the, uh, when they was busy fishing and the storms comes and all those things. After that, the disciples follow him. So uh, yeah, they left everything behind and they just follow him. So sometimes it's very important, you know. And that is the thing we, we, our hearts needs to be open so that he can guide us in. Uh, the way that we can be. Then also an important thing is to forget the past. As Krista said, that we must focus on the good things of the past to take that, that also with us, you know, as a, as a good lesson. <clears throat> and I also think I, I also a believer of uh, testimony is also very important for me, you know. Um, I think because, um, as she said, that we cannot offend some people who just tell them a lot of things, unbelievers. I'm talking about unbelievers. But um, if we, um, is the example, you know, and, um, you know, so then, then the Lord um, will show you the way how to work with those people and, um, you know, and he will do the work through you. And then also to keep your mouth closed on certain times, that is also very important because you cannot always say whatever you want to. But uh, you know, as we said, we are led by the Spirit. He will show us and help us, you know, and that is a very, um, you know, so that we can hear what God say and what we can speak. And I just want to... Um, oh yeah, a very big thing what happened also for me this week 
Um, it's in Matthew's, I don't know, the scriptures is now not with me on the stage, but I know that Jesus um, uh, saw Moses and Elijah and, and the disciples and everybody was afraid and everything. But what opened for me out of that whole situation was also that those things is reality. You know, those things is real. So for me, it's also, I think, I don't know, I don't want to say anything, but I think it is giving us the, um, what can I say, um, the, you know, we, uh, it, it, it shows us that definitely, as God said, he is with you. Whenever you go, maybe through death, he's there with you. So he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. But those things is real. So there is definitely life with him when you stay in him. It's not that your life will stop whenever you die on earth. You know, there's definitely a new life. And, and all those things, you know, all the things is in the Bible that, that was, from the Old Testament and until the New Testament. So, yo, this is only um, this morning also. I can just say thank you, Lord, for your grace and your love and your mercy over our lives to open these things for us and that we can learn still more and more. There's so many things to learn about. So, yo, thank you. And thank you, uh, Priscilla. Yeah, that's very true. You know that. Uh, we must always, you know, uh, 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 that the Holy Spirit is leader. Because in that, what uh, that uh, Jesus said, uh, that he only say how and what, you know. Because a lot of times people can say something, but it's the way how they say it that makes the whole difference. So, yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, when I, talk to people and I said, you know, but we must focus on the things in the spirit. Yeah, things happen in the in the in the natural, but we must remember that the things that is in the natural will end up at a time. And that we can see actually what is happening now uh, on the earth is actually uh, the earth that rebel in what it sees. Uh, because our spirits are created, so you know that that uh, we, uh, the Holy Spirit only reflects on what He sees. And so the earth is not seeing Christ, because we know that the the true Church is still in uh, obscurity. And so the earth is not seeing Christ, and now He's rebelling. And that's what the Word said, you know. Uh, it is the birth pains, you know. But thank you very much, uh, uh, Priscilla. Uh, is there Natabiling or Bongibi? Is there something that you want to say? Um, uh, I would like to add on. I don't know if, uh, okay. but yeah, um, that um, you know. The scripture also in, in, in John 14, verse uh, 14, it says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Um, and again, the, there's a scripture in, in Ephesians 4, 29, where let no, the word of God says, let no corrupt way proceed out of your, uh, proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may uh, impart grace to the hearers mm -hmm. and uh, my comment on, on this um, uh, it is to say that um, we need to also develop you know we need to also uh, de develop uh, like a discernment to say to develop uh, we have to know also times uh, on what to say at, at that particular place, you know, we have to have that skill uh, 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 because I believe that it also will take time to develop discernment, you know, because you have to discern 
to to other people before you open your mouth or you say anything so that it may give grace to those who hear you but what we need to say is the word because that is our mandate our mandate is to to speak christ to speak his word other than nothing but so i'm just speaking generally on 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 any matter you can come across since now the scripture says we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling uh, whenever we preach the gospel or we speak the gospel or we talk to anyone about anything that fear of 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 that grace uh, it, it must come such that now the 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 hearer uh, 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 it, it actually whatever that we advice to the person who will be listening it will be it will give grace to that person so that it takes a, a discernment that you be like be able to discern the time and season at that time whenever you're speaking to anyone because the time and season it's not mainly about uh, the move of god as well it's it's in it can also include the state where you are are in it, at that position where you are uh, whether you're speaking to 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 a, a person who is objecting uh the salvation or who's, or who's objective of uh, uh uh jesus christ uh um or to say no uh, christ doesn't doesn't exist so uh, um we need to also have that kind of discernment uh, by the holy spirit to know what to say at that time thank you uh, thank you, Bungewe. Yeah, that's really true. <clears throat> and thank you for for your contribution. Ntabeleng, is there something that you want to say? No, I don't have anything to say. All right, now that's fine. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you for the time that we had this morning uh, to um, to talk about your word. Father, we thank you that you did not leave us uh, as orphans in Jesus, uh, ascending back to you, Lord, but that you sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is with us. He teach us. He is our advocate. And we are so thankful for the Holy Spirit in our lives. So, Father, where we are talking this morning and from the last Sunday, actually, that we as the church must die to ourselves so that Christ can live through us. And uh, first of all, in every individual, but we must come to the place that we are doing it corporately. That is the focus that we can do corporately, coming into the oneness uh, so that it can also go globally. And Father, that I thank you that you are a God of suddenness. It looks sometimes to us that we wonder how long it will take. But Lord, you are a God of suddenness. I pray for everyone that was on the platform this morning. And I pray for the grace to us that we will be able to die in such a way that it is successful dying and to Christ. We pray, Father, that you will go with everyone this week. Lord, that you will open our eyes more and more to um, to understand and see uh, the the things that, uh, that the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us that yet must be, that, that yet come to us. So, Father, we thank you for that. And uh, we want to declare that we love you. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.